What's up, fam? It's your boy, Heaven Hollywood, of course. And we're back on the IE Network. This is the Heaven Hollywood Report. And let's get to it. Shout out to my sponsor, Behind the Industry. Dot blog. Make sure you check them out on all mobile devices and the world wide web. Before we get started, please make sure that you like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss one video. Let's go. Let's get it kicked off with your girl, Glorilla. Kerbin on Kerbin. So Glorilla has had a great October so far. I would say great September and October. She is having a strong end of the year. Now, not only did she release the album Glorious, that's getting rave reviews everywhere. All right. <clears throat> Her biggest streaming day of all time happened uh, just the other day. 5.2 million streams. That was on October 12th, like over the weekend. She um, had the most streams of her life in one day. 5.2 million streams. Uh, Glorious, her album, got 3.5 million streams in its first day released on Spotify. Um, her song, uh, she, she is currently the highest charting female um, artist on U.S. Apple Music. Uh, highest charting album by a female that was it got to number two. Now, also her single TGIF is now platinum, has sold over a million copies. All right, and that song is now up to number 28. We the charts didn't come out for today, uh, yeah, yesterday. Out of yesterday, that song is now in the top 20, uh, uh, right, right outside the top 20. All right, and it looks as though her single, What You Know About Me with Sexy Red, might also be heading for top 40. Now, her album, Glorious, they are saying it was first predicted to be to go from, sell between 45 and 58,000 copies. Now they're saying it, it could get up to, depending on, uh, you know, Whenever the, the week starts to end, that's when it picks back up again. It's usually back up in the beginning. And then as the week starts to end, they said this album could get up to 65K. All right. If it's if it uh, continues streaming upward, Glorilla could debut with about 65,000. And that would be amazing um, for Glorilla. That would be higher than Meg The Stallion and a little and just second to Doja Cat's. You know, as far as uh, the albums that's come out over the last couple of years. Of course, Nicki Minaj did the 228 with um, PF2 a couple of years ago. But, um, or I believe it's 23, 2023. And um, now, since since then, Megan Thee Stallion had 60K or 65K, I believe. And then I believe Doja Cat was 70. They said this could get up to 63,000, so... Uh, that would actually be right under Meg. I think Megan did 65. I'm not sure. But, wow. Glorilla is killing it right now. And like I said to people, she, right now she's my favorite female artist. And I am loving what I'm hearing from Glorilla. Keep it up, Glow. Keep it up. Yeah, Glow. Moving on to your girl, Kayla Nicole. Now, if you don't know who that is, that is the ex-girlfriend of Travis Kelsey. That's who Travis Kelsey was dating, allegedly prior to, date, right before he dated Taylor Swift. Well, she was on Un Unapologetically Angel, that's Angel Reese's podcast, and she stared the pot. She stared something up that got Tayana Taylor livid. All right. So in case you don't know, uh, Kayla Nicole, she goes on unapologetically Angel. Angel Reese asked her for her craziest relationship. Uh, I think she happened. Her crazy relationship story. Take a look at what Kayla Nicole said. Craziest thing you've done in a relationship. This is one of my we weren't in the relationship, but this is probably one of my favorite. Crazy Kayla stories, because I don't have that many. But I'm a Scorpio, and I have that crazy in me, though. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, what it's back do? there. So, I was dating a guy. Okay. I was dating a guy, and he dumped me oh. through a text message. 
And he dumped me for this singer slash actress who was famous at the time. Mm -hmm. Dumped me for her. Lied about it for months, then popped out with her, and it became like this public thing, and it was like, oh my God, we love them. Another like celebrity, iconic relationship. Mm -hmm. And of course, little old me, I'm devastated, I'm heartbroken. I had just moved to New York to like be with this person and move in with them. It was a whole thing. It's not who y'all think. Yeah, was, you guys will not be able to figure this out. Or maybe they will, who cares, it doesn't matter. So he breaks up with me, dumps me, moves on, and for Halloween that year, I dressed up as her. Oh! I dressed up as that lady for Halloween. And not only Are the I, pictures out? They're there somewhere. They're on the internet. And it went viral. Clock that. It went viral. It was everywhere. Like really? Was, and I was just before, like, I was even anything on Instagram, which is why it was even funnier, because everybody's like, oh my God, you look so good. Did he say it. something? Yeah, you called me crazy. <laughs> like, you're nuts. You're crazy. And that is what Kayla Nicole had to say on Angel Reese's podcast. Well, it did not take long for the crowd or the internet to figure out who she was talking about. And it did not take long for Tiana Taylor to come back and express her feelings on what Kayla Nicole had just said. And this is what Tiana posted. Tiana says, it's really crazy that everyone is allowed to bother me and be distasteful. Everybody gets to play while I move with grace always. But now I want to have a little Sagittarius fun too. And it's a problem. F the Amon part, I'm divorced and happily so. However, her choice of words were very distasteful and uncalled for. She knew exactly what she was doing. That lady said she was famous at the time. Also said, I don't care who see it. It was very distasteful and uncalled for. Most importantly, she knew people would dig. So automatically, my name is attached to the nonsense. At that point, she didn't need to at me. That was clearly a quick search. My name was trending without an at before even saying a word. That's how I seen it. LOL. On top of the fact that the math wasn't mathing and the facts weren't facting. However, the level of cringe factor was. LOL. I'm finding out just like the world that her intentions were ill and petty. She pulled the black card when it came to Taylor Swift, but in the same circle turned around and tried to bully the black woman that was married to her situationship. She claimed dumped her for me. Dressing up like me for what? Crazy part about it all is I actually showed love under her pick when she posted it. Like I did the other three million blah, 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 blah people that dressed up as me for Halloween. Whole time I ain't even know she was being shady. Now I do. So in that case, petty panties on. I had my little fun. I said what I said. And now I'm done and headed back to the set. So then after that was posted, Kayla Nicole came back with this on Twitter. Sometimes I'm asked about my personal life and decide to share the lessons I've learned. To reiterate what I said in the long in an hour-long interview, learn from my mistakes. If you watched it in its entirety, you know that I don't condone the crazy decision I made literally 10 years ago. She also says, I will continue to speak on my life experiences when I see fit with zero shame. Because it's my story to tell. And if it helps just one woman avoid the tough lessons I've learned, my obstacles will not have been in vain. And I think she made one more post on Twitter about it. And she says, I share a sliver of my truth for once on here. And here y'all come with the group chat think pieces. And that was the last that she posted about it. Um, let me know down below what you think. Do you think that Tiana Taylor was justified in coming at Kayla Nicole? Even though she didn't mention uh, Iman Shumper's name. But you know she had to figure that the internet would figure it out. And she said she don't really care whether they figured it out or not. So do you think Tiana Taylor should have a problem with Kayla Nicole? Or should she have a problem with the internet being nosy? I mean, let me know down in the comments what you think. I personally think that Kayla Nicole knew that the internet was going to dig. All you have to do is go look back and see who she dressed at as Halloween. And then you put two and two together, move to New York. Iman Shumper was playing for the Knicks. You know, stuff like that. I think one thing that really bothered Tiana is her saying was famous at the time. You see Tiana brought that back up, so that bothered her. <laughs> but let me know down in the comments what you think about it. Moving on to this Fox, Megan the Stallion and the 29th of 
October, I believe it is, the Megan Thee Stallion's upcoming In Her Words documentary. Everybody is talking about it. Uh, presented by Rock Nation and Time Studios. And I believe it's actually the 31st. All right. It's a director, Anika Onura, Onura, on Megan Thee Stallion's upcoming In Her Words documentary. Her raw and beautiful spirit really shines through in the film. She is a champion for all women who deserve their truth to be heard. The synopsis of the film directed by Emmy winner Anika Onomura, uh, Lizzo's Watched Out for the Big Girls, for Time Studios, Rock Nation, and Anika Productions, reads, follow the Houston native's journey on the road to stardom as she tenaciously navigates fame, grief, pressure, and success. The documentary unpacks Megan's most vulnerable moments in a powerful way that allow fans to meet the real Megan Pete. I feel so honored to work with Amazon, MGM Studio, Rock Nation, and Time Studio to share Megan's story, stated Onura. Her raw and beautiful spirit really shines through in the film. She's a champion for all women who deserve their truth to be heard, and I, I can't wait for it. I can't wait for it. I, I, I know it's going to be a great piece. And shout out to all the hotties. Megan Thee Stallion, man. Uh, in her words, her story, her life, October 31st. Moving on to the boy Drizzy Drake. And you know, it's funny. The charts came out. The uh, you know Hot 100 charts came out. No rap songs in the top 10. It's now been this way for a couple of weeks. And everybody, now everybody's asking, oh, where's the rap? Where's the rap? Well, the guy who was, was holding the genre on his back for the last 13 years, you guys said, get out of here. We don't need you in the culture. You're a colonizer. You're a culture vulture. Get out of here. Now, now, so now you watch the party die, as your boy Kendrick said. Watch the party die because there is nothing coming down the pipe. <laughs> nothing. All right? Maybe in the future, Glorilla. Hopefully her song will get to the top 10. But there is nothing coming down the pipe for pure rap. So just enjoy Sabrina Carpenter, Taylor Swift. You know, uh, what's his name? Bamboozy or whatever his name is. Because this is the way you guys wanted it. You guys said, get Drake up out of here. The most consistent representative for the culture over the last 10 years. And you guys want him up out of here. Right? You try to make us believe and you want to fool yourself to thinking that Kendrick Lamar is the answer. And Kendrick Lamar is not the answer. If he was, he would have been on top all these years he's been out. If he wasn't the answer before, why is he the answer now? All that fake love and support you were giving him when you know it was really just hate for Drake. So now if I'm Drake, I tell everybody to kick rocks. I'm not releasing nothing. I'm not releasing nothing until I get damn ready. Shout out to Drizzy Drake, man. And we're going to close it out with the queen, Miss Onika. Nicki Minaj, the second and final leg of the PF2 tour has come to an end. The gags renamed the Gag City Tour. And she finishes with the fourth highest grossing rap tour of all time, $108.8 million. Um, she's the only female rapper to ever gross over $100 million. $108.8 million, the fourth uh, highest rap tour ever. Only Kendrick Lamar, Travis Scott, and Drake is ahead. And she is number one um, female rapper as far as tour goes. Let's go over a couple of other things uh, with Nicki Minaj. Now, she uh, will have she, her very own segment named Nicki Reloaded for Vogue's 2024 Forces of Fashion. Tomorrow in New York, she's going to be doing that. Um, 
And then after that, she'll, she'll be in conversation with Eva Chan, the vice president of Fashion Meta. And it reads, Nikki Reloaded. Global icon Nicki Minaj is the queen of hip-hop, a multi-hyphenate mother, musician, performer, writer, and businesswoman who triumphs at all of them, yet she's also known for her singular style. Few could pull off her colorful, maximalist looks, which have taken up from Tokyo to South Jamaica, Queens, and everywhere in between. Eva Chan, vice president of the fashion at Meta, is in conversation with the woman who has broken so many records, though she's just getting started. So that is going to be great. Looking forward to that. Also, shout out Nicki Minaj and 50 Cent for Beep Beep has now went gold, selling over 500,000 units. She posted this picture of her and Russ. I don't know whether she posted or Russ posted it. And a lot of people were asking about a Russ and Nicki Minaj collab in the past. And, and there was rumors that there was one. So, um, Y'all let me know. Do you think, do, do, do you have another collab coming up? Russ and Nicki Minaj. And on Nicki's next journey, which we know is going to be PF3 at some point. Uh, who would you like to see Nicki collab with, if anybody, you know, on, on PF3, which she plans on putting out uh, probably, I would say, the first half of next year. So let me know down in the comments what you guys think about a Russ collaboration, and if not, who would you like to see Nikki collab with in 2025? It's your boy, Heaven Hollywood, for the IE Network. Please like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. Catch you on the next one.